What's up, DigiDestins? This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, and today we're going to be doing the Japanese report. So without further ado, let's see what Jap Japan's doing for you and talk about some interesting decks and some janky decks that have been appearing. So without further ado, let's dive in the video and talk about it. So first off, let's go over what's topping. We have Apocalyptic Mon at 15, or Krusty Boy. Then we have Anubis at 7, SOC at 5, Red Black Greymon at 5, Purple Blue Garumon, Shine Greymon at 5, Yellow Vaccine, Bloom Lord, Lev Levi Mon, or Leviathan Mons, Grace Nova, Leopard Mon, Fang Long, or U Mon, D Brigade, Crossheart, Blue Flare, Armor Rush, Bialzamon, the Alphamon Ultimate Body Control, Leomon All Force, Black X Antibody, Raidmon, Yellow Hybrid, Phoenixmon, Alter S, Mirage Galga, Machine, and Imperial. So, what are we going to be talking about today? We have plenty of decks to talk about, but let's go over them one by one. First, I want to talk about the Phoenixmon deck. It's kind of very interesting to finally see that after so many waves of support, it finally has a coherent strategy. Is it going to be tier one? Probably not. This is still probably rogue at best. So let's let's take a quick look at what they're kind of working with here. So we kind of know from past we have BT11 stuff, all this fun, good goodies that just really make the deck function. You know, you have the new Beomon that helps searches by trashing one card with Avion in one of his traits from your hand. Reveal the top four cards of your deck. Add one red card among them to your hand. Return the rest of the bottom of the deck. Kind of cool to trade that off. What was very interesting to me is that it's just pretty cool to have this for a starter main phase. But you return when a card is removed from your security stack, gain one memory. So using these vital tools, you get like even this new Phoenix Mon here is an on play on deletion. If your opponent has three or fewer security, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP. If your opponent has four or more security, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. And then when Digivolving may play one red. Digimon with 5,000 DP or less, or one Tamer from your hand without paying its cost. So it kind of synergizes really nice with this Phoenix Mons, that it says your return once return when a card is removed from them, your opponent's security stack, you may activate one of this Digimon's on deletion skills. On deletion, you may play one red Avion, bird, beast, animal, sovereign, other than sea animal in one of its traits with 3,000 DP or less from your hand without paying its cost for each red Tamer you have in play at 2,000 max. So this kind of combo is really nice with this Phoenix Mon, you know, with the Garu Garuda Mon, uh, Ace, Garuda Mon, Da Mon, yeah. You know, it has on play when evolving, may play one red tamer with play cost four or less without paying its cost. So it kind of synergizes really nice for its burst digi evolution and all turns when your tamer is played, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with blocker. So really solid there answers a little bit of board threat you know you use twin wings of love you may play one red tamer card with a play cost four or less from your hand without paying its cost so the deck cent centralizes on playing these tamers and then benefit from building this wide board of tamers since you know really there isn't a lot of tamer hate besides a few cards like hades force and you know three play cost removal a lot of your four costs stay on board long term. And the new Sora actually helps synergize with the deck in a way. So all turns when a red Digimon is returned from your trash to your hand by return. Turning this Tamer to your hand, you may play one red card with Avion, Bird, Beast, blah, 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 blah. In one of its traits and 13,000 DP or less from your hand without paying its cost for each opponent's security stack. Subtract 2,000 from this. So, I mean, if your opponent has one security, you're playing your Phoenix Mons. And then basically from there it goes down. So the more security they have, the more Sora becomes less effective. But being able to cycle her in and out is kind of pretty cool actually to get a replay value. Then we do have what was very interesting to me was I was looking at this list here. This one happened to win. And this one was none other than... What is classified for Grumon now, because they kind of bunched in the, because the bottom line stays pretty much relatively the same between all the decks, it really changes the top end. And the problem comes down to, unlike Greymon, which was very restrictive to its deck, 
they made the Gurumon X antibody, the Gurumon baseline, so generic that it's not even funny. It just does what it needs to, you know. When the Digimon, you know, as long as it has Gurumon or Omnimon, it kind of synergizes, but the top end doesn't care. But when Digivolving draw two, then trash two cards in hand. If the Digimon has Gurumon or X antibody, Digi Evolution gain one memory. So your plan is to trash a whole bunch. With the new Bella Star or Bialza Star, you fill up your trash so quickly that you basically answer threat on board. You know, you have Rivals Barrage that can basically delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest level. So Apocalyptic Mon, even though it's milling you, use BL, BL Star's effect, use Rivals Barrage, remove it off the board. Since you can loop this a little bit and do this a couple times, you end up really applying some nasty pr pressure to your opponent that they're not really ready for. And it keeps, you know, Apocalyptic Mon kind of in check because you can easily remove it off the board. Maybe they'll switch up their tech strategy if it becomes too heavy on options, but the way the deck plays now, it's n no surprise how they're going about it. What's really nasty is they'll use Bella Star, and then if there's a couple seven full clusters in their trash, they can go Beelzebub X Antibody, which will trigger seven full cluster, putting it at the bottom, deletes the lowest level. If they have two Apocalyptic Mons on board, instantly you remove the threat. So strategy is fill up the board, get it all ready. And the blue stuff is teched in because you have Gobblemon X Antibody and Gurumon X Antibody. Likelihood of them being not on the board is pretty slim. And you get to use Metal Storm and Kakaitis Breath to kind of just remove threats off the board. So all in all, really solid here. And it puts a lot of pressure and threat. And then we do have the big Titan itself. I figured... Why not for the first kind of week of understanding what JP is going through? We kind of can take a look here. So this is what kind of a basic list looks like. The whole concept is pretty simple here. I'm going to be straightforward with you. The deck plays very much like this. So the whole concept of the deck is that you are going to use the Gabumon plus the Gurumon X antibody to... Mm, basically mill yourself pretty quickly you're going to mill it up get it all ready if you have an apocalyptic mon in hand you're going to use magna dramon's you know on play effect for the minus security one but you also normal list actually do tech in the Karanium on so this one doesn't tech it in but they're using metallic dramon so while you have a tamer in play this Digimon gains blocker and reboot but it's on play D Digivolve all your opponent's Digimon, then delete one of your, one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost fire or less. If no Digimon was deleted by the text, none of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon can Digivolve until the end of the turn. So that makes it preventative from your opponent being able to play the game. So you kind of minus their board, make it so they can't really do anything. But because of how Apocalyptic Mon is so generic, at the end of a turn, once per turn, by placing one level six or lower card from your trash at the bottom of this Digivolution, activate one on play effect of the card placed by this Digivolution effect. Then, for each level six card in this Digimon's Digivolution, trash the top two cards of your opponent's deck. So, basically, milling out your opponent, you kind of just stall them out. They can't do anything. And then, boom, you make them regret playing the game. So, the deck's super nasty, super consistent. It's just because of how quickly it just assembles and just makes your opponent just have a bad day. So at the end of the day, this is the tier one deck to watch out for. Then we do have the police deck. I wanted to talk about the police deck because it's a fusion between D Brigade and the basically the new Ryudamon support. So Oriumon's quite interesting. So when did you evolving if you have a tamer with D police in his traits in the CG? Evolution, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon and, or Tamers to the bottom of the deck. All turns, when this Digimon becomes suspended, you may play one Digimon with Beast or Digiplace in its traits 5,000 DP or less without playing its cost. So basically, all this has Digiplace, so minus the Dorumon Security Boy. So, how are we going to win injectively? We're using Commandermon because it wants D Brigade and D Police, a combination of both. Ryudamon does by placing one Zulin from your and as this is your bottom Digivolution, this Digimon isn't affected by the effects of your opponent's Digimon until the end of your opponent's turn. So a sticky body with Ayuda, Zylu, Zayu, uh, 
if you have it's a memory setter and then you know main mind link one of your digimon with x antibody or digi police but also while this this digimon has x antibody digi police trait this digimon gains alliance and reboot so basically you can take advantage of it and then basically how mind link works at the end of all turns you can pull them out of the digi evolution source but the Alliance and Reboot's really nice. You set yourself up to restand and do some crazy shenanigans. And then Sa Sa Saki, Satsaki, uh, Tamahami, Tamihame. Uh, late night. So, you know, basically gives jamming a reboot. So that's kind of where it's going for. You know, you have D Brigade just setting up, you know, you know, Digipolice spamming. You're just going to be playing out this deck how you want to. It's really kind of awesome that they made a digi police deck that kind of functions and it's probably going to function even more and more because the more digi police come out the better the deck gets so it does it's never going to not get any support as long as there's going to be future you know of that what is it the, the digimon story that's going on right now as long as that exists you're going to expect this and then we're going to talk about at least the updated version to the Grace Nova deck. And it's quite interesting, to be honest with you. I'm quite excited to take a look in a really more in-depth view of what a recent top one is. We've kind of talked about this before on the channel with Diana and Apollo. It kind of just wants to jog us on your opponent's turn and basically have Grace Nova be the big threat that they have to answer. He's kind of a sticky body because he just can't be... Would lead the battle by opponent's effect by trashing two of its digi evolutions, prevent it from leaving, and it just kind of controls the boards there. Well, Bokumon, Bakuman. So while this your opponent has no Digimon with equal or less than in this digi evolution, this Digimon gains jamming. So this is where you're going to get your extra, keep your guys swinging in. Nothing to worry about here, especially with Palomon being able to check so many securities. Then you have Gammon here. So start a main, choose one of your digi. One card under one of your opponent's Digimon and trash it. This Digimon can't be blocked for the turn. So it puts up a preventative blocker as well. I mean, you're going to still want to do your combos and stuff like that. What's really interesting is Full Metal Blaze. Return two of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon. Then if your opponent has eight or more cards in hand, return one of your opponent's level six or higher to the bottom of its owner's deck. Answer to Apocalyptic Mon as you need it. Basically, this format, you need to have answers left and right. But all in all, basically good removal with BBS Blow. And then basically locking out good with good night moon. You can use Cress Cressimon basically to prevent your opponent from can't suspend, they can't swing at you or block. So just a lot of good comes through this. And you know, Diana Mono strip sources helps keep the tempo going. I'm excited to see where this deck goes, and hopefully it can do some more crazy shenanigans. BT EX five really underwhelmed this deck but i think it's just people that haven't figured out how to build the deck yet to break it but we'll see where it goes from there but all in all let's just take one last peek at the meta i know i have some charts here to look at you know you kind of definitely see where everybody else is kind of falling behind a little bit here but apocalyptic mon is 19 percent of the meta at the moment after week one you know you have anubis at you know nine basically nine percent you know, 6.3 for the Fenrir deck. And, you know, you got Red Black Greymon tailing behind, Purple Blue Garumon tailing behind. This can easily change in a couple days. But this is surprisingly splashed in with Bella Star and Garumon, Metal Garumon. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next one. Peace!